Hi everyone, this is Jennifer Bagnashi with Deep Believer. Today I am excited and ecstatic to have our guest today. She was a fifth generational witch. When I saw her interview, I had to have her on. She was raised into witchcraft. By the time of her teenage years, she suffered from massive depression. She had many suicide attempts, but at the same time, she was able to cast spells and astral project out of her body. She knows many secrets of the enemy, and today she's going to reveal a few of them. Julie, thank you so much for being on today. Uh, hi, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having, having me here. It's a pleasure. Julie, could you tell us how you started off? Tell us about your family and you being a fifth generational witch. So could we start with your great-grandmother or your great-great-grandmother? Yeah. So I am originally from Colombia, uh, a place in South America and country in South America. I moved to Spain when I was around six, seven years. So my great grandmother, she was the one that raised uh, my grandmother, my mom and me. <clears throat> so, um, yes, yeah, since, since a really young age, I started to be trained to be a witch um, at the age of 12. I, I was uh, consecrated and I started to have uh, different uh, people training me and uh, and then my great grandmother she never called herself a witch uh, but she used to do um, abortions uh, healings healings on people she used to also be a medium and recently we found out that uh, she actually did exorcism on people which we are trying to understand but it's quite curious now because my mom and me now we move in deliverance so knowing that you know that she was doing that so we are actually trying to understand uh, uh, that what she was doing there so so when you said healing um i remember you mentioning to me earlier that um the many gifts that god gives us the enemy tries to take them and use them for his purposes yeah. So explain the type of healings that you say that she did, or healings, because we know. So how was that? So, for example, if people had like fractures, uh, broken bones, issues, even like babies, if, if they had like diarrhea, stomach pain, things like this, people will go to her and she used to kind of like pray for them because she used to move. I believe that she used to move in white magic, but at the same time, probably black magic too. So white magic is when you kind of like help people and you don't harm people. Um, so she used to do that, but obviously you know that um, everything that's not guided by the Holy Spirit is witchcraft. So we believe that she was healing and doing all these things, but a different a spirit that is not the Holy Spirit. Mm. So when she would heal people, um, was there an alternative motive in the spiritual side? So was that person healed, but then something else happened to them? Yeah, that so wasn't... normally, yeah, so normally when people go to these places to get healed or, or you know, or even to know about the, their future <clears throat> or even to uh, speak to their, to their people, to, uh, to the family that die, what happens is that they are opening a portal. So they might receive healing, but that's not a real healing. That is a fake healing because something worse can come because of that. And I have seen a lot of people that actually they go to these healers or shamans like uh, to get healed. And what happens is that after that, they get like a different illness and some people die because that that is not the real power that is fake. So it's giving you something, but at the same time, it's also taking something from you. So that's how witchcraft and the occultism work. They give you something, but it's not free. You have to pay back. You pro probably your life, your family, illnesses, poverty. So it's never free. And it's, that's why it's one of the reasons why it's so dangerous. Tell us about when you were, I think, two years old. You remember your grandmother placing you in a circle of fire could you elaborate on that one yeah so I I, I was really young um, some people don't understand how I remember those things but um, I remember certain things that happened when I was really young like they are uh, really strong experiences and one of them I remember I was around two years and my great-grandmother took me to a place and uh, there was an, another man in there and I remember they put me inside a ring of fire and they started to do something with plants. I believe that it was probably an in initiation by that point because from, from that point I started to have really strong encounters 
uh, with the enemy, with the spiritual world in general. Um, so I believe that that was probably what happened um, that day. Wow. So that was probably the inception of your um, of your start. So what happened when you were four years old? You mentioned when you were four years old, someone came into your room while you were laying with your mother. What happened? So, um, yeah, as I mentioned uh, previously to you, I don't think I told you that um, as I was initiating in the occultism, my aunt, by that point, she was Christian. She was the first one in the family. And she used to take me to this church. Obviously, my great grandmother used to argue with her because she didn't uh, want me uh, to go to this place. But I remember my, my aunt you used to take me to this church. And I remember going to Bible school. I remember people praying for her and, and she falling. So I, I used to see that there was something there. But obviously, at the same time, I was I was like experiencing all this witchcraft, all this occultism, this demon, these experiences. So I remember that around the same time, <clears throat> I was sleeping with my mom, and she fell asleep quite quick. But I know that I wasn't dreaming. I was I know that that wasn't a vision. That was real. And I hear this evil thing coming inside the room, walking like 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 that type of sound, and then. As soon as he entered the room, suddenly the atmosphere in the room completely changed and it just became dark. And this evil thing started to speak in tongues. And at the, at the same time, he was singing. And I hear like an instrument, like a, I don't know if it was a guitar or what it was, but it was like singing in tongues. And it was like releasing something into the atmosphere that night. So obviously I was petrified in like there. I was trying to call my mom, but she wasn't responding. And then this thing came and pulled up the blanket and he started to touch my legs, my knees and my feet. And his hands were really hot. So I think after that, I think I passed out. I fell asleep. I don't know what happened because of the experience. It was so strong that I think I couldn't take it. And then the next day I wake up and I was literally traumatized. My mom said that I was like, that he thinks that, that I was getting crazy because I keep saying the uh, Satan was here. Satan was here. I'm hearing something like is here. So it was like such a strong experience for me that even now all my family knows that, oh, Julie saw Satan when she was only four or five. And that is still in the family. So they know that I had an encounter with, with, with the enemy. And I remember the next day when I wake up and I told my mom that, I was um, doing my hair and I was looking myself in the mirror and suddenly I saw fire coming out of my eyes. So literally that day I thought I I'm getting crazy, what's going on? I was really young and I couldn't understand all of these experiences. So I saw literally the fire coming out of my eyes and I started to scream, mommy. So it was so traumatic. But recently when I became Christian, I had a dream and in the dream, I was trying to chase Jesus. He was walking in the middle of the street and I was telling him, Jesus, wait for me, wait for me. And he kept calling me, come on, come on. And he started to go up some stairs. So as I was running, trying to chase him, when I reached the top, he suddenly turned around and his face became like a lion covered in fire and he jumped in me and I saw his eyes like fire. And then the Holy Spirit told me that the encounter that I had when I was young with the fire in my eyes, that I was experiencing two, two things, darkness because of the occultism, but also I was having the, these experiences with heaven because my aunt was taking me to this place and she was already consecrating me. So it was just like a mix of these two, you know, darkness and, and light trying to come and, and it was just really intense but at the same time now i understand what the enemy was trying to, to do so that's a perfect example of spiritual warfare how your your aunt was warring for you for the divine and your other your grandmother was kind of warring for you for the occult so i remember you mentioning that in you said that you had all these experiences well when you were younger you even had multiple experiences with angels uh, could you elaborate on that one too 
Yeah, so it was also around the same time when all of this was happening. It was like the enemy trying to kill me, but at the same time, God was sending his angels to protect me. And I have different experiences before I moved to Spain. And one of them was one when um, I went to the shop to buy something. I was really young. I was probably by that point, like six. And I went to the shop to buy something. And as I was trying to cross, I couldn't see if it was like a car coming. And all I felt was a huge bang that hit me, but I didn't feel that it hit me. I felt that I was pulled back like that. And then I felt like the wheels of the car were, li were lifting and I only got a scratch here on my, on my foot. So it didn't do anything else to me, just, just here, a little injury. But everyone thought that I was there because imagine a tiny, skinny six-year-old and then this huge bang hit me, but I didn't, I didn't feel anything. I felt like someone pulled me back and I felt the wheels of the, of the bang just being lifted. And that was the first one. And the second one was um, when I was at my go, uh, God's parents' uh, farm and I used to love horses since, since a really young age. I used to ride horses, take the horses and go and for a ride. And that day, I remember I was with my godfather and he was riding the horse. I was at the back and we were going up a mountain. So there was all mud, stones, everything. And I was like falling and I keep grabbing myself to him. But I like it was so like that, that I was just falling. And suddenly I felt hands that took me from here, lift me and fall put me on the on the ground and it reminds me of the bible verse that says and he took me out and he put me on solid ground and it, it just keep reminding me of that and I know that that day if I could fall I would have probably died because there was a stones mud and it was quite 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 high quite quite deep so I know that I could have probably died but I felt literally someone grabbed me and pulled me down and I know that that day I know that the Lord was also protecting me from from there so tell me about uh when you got a little bit older your mother began teaching you uh witchcraft but from the white witch standpoint or you were trained by a white witch is that correct yes yeah, so um my mom so then we moved to spain after that and wherever we used to go my mom used to or we used to attract all of these witches that they used to just come out of nowhere and every time that they used to come in the house and they used to see me they used to say like oh she has something she your daughter has a gift but I knew that I used to see dreams and they will become real I knew that when I used to release words things used to happen so I knew that there was something in me that it was kind of like powerful but I didn't know how to control him and I remember before this white witch came in the house I had a dream and the next day when I put the news it was exactly what I saw in the in the in the dream that it was some trains exploding in Spain and the next day in the morning there was like a kind of like terror attack on the trains in Madrid. And I remember I started to panic. That was the first time that I experienced something so strong. And I was like, kind of like crying and with anxiety because I knew that I have this, but how do I control this? What happened? And that was when my mom introduced me to her friend, the white witch, so white witches or white magic. Uh, they, they, they say that uh, they, are no, they, they, are, they are not evil because they are not hurting people. They are, they are just using all this white magic to help people to, for the universe, uh, nature. So she has started to train me to change my dream. So every time that I used to have a bad dream, she used to kind of like help me, okay, you have the power to control your dreams. You have the power in your mouth. So even witches understand the authority and the power in your words. So the power of the declaration. So she, she uh, started to train me to those things with candles, white candles, the power of attraction and how to read white uh, candles for uh, know the future or things like this. Or even if you wanted to bring someone to you with a white candle. So she started to uh, teach me all of these things. And I just thought like, wow, like I feel like I'm finding my place now because now I know that I am different. I am. But I know that I also have this power that I need to train 
and she was the first one that kind of like started to guide me and help me in that. Wow. So when you say that uh, witches basically, well, this witch right here, you said that she thought she was doing something good. Do witches usually believe that what they're doing is a good thing? Yeah, <laughs> that's why they don't they don't they don't think occultism and witchcraft is bad, because why witches think that, you know, I am just I'm not hurting anyone. So I'm just loving everyone, loving animals, loving nature and just, you know, connecting myself to the universe. I'm just not doing anything. But the, my question is, who is guiding your experience? Which spirit is guiding the experience? Because if you are doing something that is not guided by the Holy Spirit, it automatically becomes witchcraft. So it doesn't matter that you are not hurting anyone. You are using a different power. You are using a different spirit that is not the Holy Spirit to do these things. So it automatically becomes witchcraft and sin and sin produces death. So you are automatically opening a portal for all of these things that come uh, for the practicing of witchcraft. So my thing for all of these people meditating new age that they think that they are not doing any harm hole. Well, who is your uh, spirit guide? Who is guiding the experience? Because for us is the Holy Spirit. But if you are doing something, even as a Christian, that you think that you are using crystals, that you are using sage to get rid of all these dark demons and all of these things. If you are using that and you are a Christian, you are in danger because the Holy Spirit doesn't need help. The Holy Spirit doesn't need sage for you to get rid of demons. The Holy Spirit doesn't need you to use crystals for protection. The Holy Spirit is our source and we should be going to him, nothing else. So everything out of the Holy Spirit becomes witchcraft. Even every prophetic act, if you are doing prophetic acts, not guided by the Holy Spirit, that also becomes witchcraft because there is a really thin line between the prophetic and witchcraft. And this is what people don't understand that sometimes we think we are, we are being prophetic, but we don't realize that we might be cr crossing the line and actually doing witchcraft. So that's why I believe that in this season, the Lord is exposing so many churches and so many people that are confusing the people, the children of God. And this is the, the, uh, the time for the church to be cleansed of all these things. Julie, so I actually recently saw a video of you speaking on people who prophesy from their own emotions rather from God. Could you touch on that one? So, yeah, so um, I was trying to explain why I believe that deliverance and the prophetic and prophecy goes together because we see nowadays so many prophets and so many prophetic people prophesying from their own filter and when they prophesy they are just prophesying rejection destruction and we are releasing those things for people and for nations so they are actually hurting people so that's why i believe that deliverance have to go together with prophecy and the prophetic because if someone has a really deep root of rejection and they haven't been delivered and set free from that when they prophesy they are going to prophesy from that rejection from that filter of rejection so they are right there releasing words of rejection words of pain and then because it says that you know that uh, uh, the devil source so that we are the mouth of god so when we are releasing that is like a double sword and the double sword is to edify and to penetrate the deepest and change but also some prophets are using that double sword to destroy people and cut people so that's why we need to be careful at the time of prophesying we need to also analyze ourselves is this coming from my own filter is this is is there something that i have to change and i believe that this is why deliverance for me and the prophetic and prophecy goes together like we need to train people in the in the prophetic but we also need to guide people into deliverance so they don't become prophets of the abaddon the abaddon is a place of destruction so we don't want to see more prophets prophesying from that place of destruction and bringing condemnation death to nations and to people so basically what you're saying is that there's power in words just like the bible says so even if this person was a true prophet, uh, they could actually prophesy some things that is not from God, but it could cast curses on people. 
exactly and this is yes and this is the same thing this is what witches and satanists and warlords they understand there is power in the war that's why they release even satanists of high rank they are assigned certain regions and cities where they understand and neighborhoods and they understand that by releasing a war of destruction and releasing a principality in that area by the war, releasing it. And that's also what happened uh, with uh, Balaam told Balak, Balak told ba Balaam to go to the high mountain and curse the people of Israel. So he took them then because he understood, first of all, that the high place means a place of authority. So there is a, a, a strategy there. Uh, when you want to take a city for the spiritual warfare for God, the high place means something. So he took this witch prophet to that mountain and he told her, curse the people of Israel. But it says that when he was trying to curse, only blessings came out of his mouth. So we know that even there is power in the world for cursings, for blessings, for life, for death. and we as christian as people of god we need to be careful of like with that and we need to understand that what you declare is what is going to come to you what you release in the atmosphere that stays there and the enemies is kind of like they grab that and they make that happen so that's why we have to be so careful with with the things that we speak and declare so that basically touches on how only humans being made in God's image. And when he created everything, all he had to do was speak. So because God has that, or because that's what God did and we're made through him, we can do the same. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. We are created in his image. He created the world with words. So we can, we need to be careful also with the things that we release, that with the things that we say. Amen. So let's go back to, uh, you mentioned different things like crystals. What are some things that people bring into their homes, even Christians, you know, bring certain things into their homes or they get involved in that we need to watch out for, you know, especially things that are popular um, or things that seems cool, like yoga or, you know, crystals. Could you just give us some examples what to watch out for? Because many people don't know. Yeah, so crystals is one of them. Like people think, oh, crystals for the energy, crystals for healing. Crystal is witchcraft. Dream catchers. Also, you shouldn't be having dream catchers. Why do you need that? The only one that needs to catch your dreams is the Holy Spirit. He is the one that is there protecting the Holy Spirit, the angels, the blood of Jesus. You don't need dream catchers in your house. Also, say it sage i see a lot of people burning sage in their houses to clean the atmosphere out of demons that's witchcraft you shouldn't be doing that stuff that is literally open portals for demons you are not cleansing your house uh, uh, you know from demons you are inviting demons to come inside your house so i would say crystals dream catchers sage obviously uh, books of occultism movies um what else? Even like things that children watch. It's, that's why we have to be so much careful with the things that our children are watching in on the TV because now there's so much witchcraft. There's so much magic. Even like um, the other day I went uh, with my son to the library and there was a whole section for witchcraft, a whole section for books on the occultism. And I was just passing there like literally so angry seeing a massive section of all of these magic books, uh, how to become a witch, how to think it spells. It's just like, it's right there for our children. And it's just become so natural that now we are calling the things that are evil good and the things that are good evil, right? And I will say that those things are really dangerous uh, uh, to bring home. Wow. So you say movies, because movies is a big thing. What type of movies should people watch out for? Um, witchcraft movies of course occultism anything i will say so this is what happened to me Be before i was a christian obviously i was involved in the occultism i used to love uh, spiritual movies with demons everything with blood i was quite dark so when i became christian one of the first thing that the holy spirit removed from me were those things like in those types of movies i used to have like you, you know, before you used to um, record all the movies in cities, like fake ones. And I used to have like four or 500 of just demons, spirits, 
blood, everything that you can imagine. And that was the first thing that the Holy Spirit told me, get rid of that. So now I understood that, okay, we need to be careful with witchcraft movies, occultism, violence, blood, even rape, sex, everything that is that you are inviting to and that your eye, your eye gate is consuming because what you see with your physical eyes is going to impact what you see in the spiritual realm. So this is what people don't understand that, pe that people think, oh, you just been legalistic. And it's not about being legalistic, but what level of consecration do you want to reach? Do you actually want to see in the spirit? Do you actually want to hear from God and discern the voice of God? Well, you need to be careful with the things that are coming into your eye gate and your ear gate because you can't just feed your spiritual, your, your spirit with rubbish. You just bring in all this rubbish and then you are expecting to see in the spirit and to have dreams. What you see is what you see in the physical is going to affect what you see in the natural. And that's why we need to have a consecrated life consecrated life and be careful with the, with the things that we are exposed to. Now, what about horror? Because that's a big thing now. I know when I was growing up, we had like one or two horror movies a year. Now they're everywhere. It's like overtaking normal movies. So would you say that horror movies is a part of what you just mentioned? So everything that is inviting the spirit of fear you shouldn't be watching those things. Like all of that stuff is literally fear. It's trying to make the person that is watching <gasps> jump and feel fear. That is opening a portal for the spirit of fear to come. And that's why we have so many teenagers now that, that they can't even sleep with the light off because they are too scared, but then they are going to the cinema and or, or, or just to watch the, these, these things. And they're inviting the, this spirit of fear, of anxiety, of terror to come and to take over. So I would say nothing that invites the spirit of fear, nothing that come damage uh, uh, your uh, spiritual eyes or what you hear in the spirit. All of that should be removed and we should completely remove all of those things from our life. Let's go back to witches, because a lot of people think that witches are green, ugly women with big noses, with a mole with hair coming out, flying on a broom, thanks to Hollywood. What do witches look like? <laughs> witches look like you have witches in governments. <laughs> you have witches with ties and dressing nice. So you have witches and satanists and, and warlocks and all of these in the governments, in the family courts. So there are no, you don't, when you see a witch, you don't expect to see someone with a long nose, with a thing in here, with a hat. That's not how it looks now. Now we see so many of these people in the occultism taking over the mid, the, the, the seven mountain, taking over the government, uh, uh, um, entertainment, Hollywood, cinema, music, that's where they are placed. So this is why I believe that us as children of God, we haven't been called to be sitting in a church every Sunday. We have been called to expand the kingdom of God to the different mountains, to the government, to the education, to media, entertainment. We have been called to take over those mountains and from that place, shine because that's basically what the enemy is doing he knows and he is positioning himself he is releasing all these people to be positioned in governments because if if the if the enemy is in the government they have authority from there to change everything and if they change everything it affects the rest of the society. Also movies, music, they are taking over, they are releasing those things. They are now writing the scripts for the movie with a spirits that are taking over and they are just writing the movies, the music with that. So this is happening, this is what is happening. So I believe that us as the church, as the children of God, we haven't been called to just go every Sunday to a four wall place sitting in there and clapping hands. We haven't been called for that. We have been called to expand the kingdom of God, to move and to take over these mountains and from there bring the uh, government and the kingdom of Jesus to take over their place. Because that's the only way that we are going to confront darkness and push back darkness. We are not going to do anything if we are just going to church and sitting there and then expecting that everything is done 
No, we need to actually make our part and go a step forward and do something about it. Amen. I completely agree because the Bible says to go out into all the world and preach the gospel, not just hear the gospel preached in church and go home and live your hunky dory life. Perfect. So let's go back to your training. Now you were trained by a white witch first, and then after you were trained by a black witch. Now, before we go into that, could you explain the difference between a white witch and a black witch? So it's kind of like black magic, white magic, but we also have like green magic, red, so all the colors po possible. But the difference between the white magic and the black one is that the white magic is used for selfless purposes. Like the witches use this for like healing, for blessing, for charms, incantation. They even do like prayers. They even like some of them use the Bible, especially the uh, Psalm 23 and 91, for protection so they even understand. So this is the difference that they think that they are not harming anyone. But then the black magic, this is used by witches to manipulate people's feelings and thoughts. So this type of magic, they use it to kill, to destroy, to bring infirmities, a, a, a poverty. And then they use blood of animals, uh, humans, they use a, a, a stones, a black candles, plant, plants. And so they just, black and white the difference is that black magic it actually goes right there to manipulate people and kill people and basically destroy people's lives so that is a difference between one and another so they're both bad though correct yeah 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 of course as i said before the difference from then and us is the spirit who is guiding the spirit us is the holy spirit then is a spirit guide so that's witchcraft because you are using power and all of these things from something that is not the source of God. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you mentioned to me even before how this black witch who taught you, and we'll go to her in a minute, how you said she was actually reading the Bible. Why was she reading the Bible and what benefit would that have for her if she wasn't using it for a good purpose? So as I said, the white witches, they, they don't think that they are doing anything wrong. So I remember even us, Sometimes we used to just get the Bible, especially when my dad died, when my dad, that we will go into that, but when he died and this, this other witch that was hel helping us, it, she was like a combination of white magic and black magic. But she told us basically that we should read Psalm 23 and Psalm 91. So every night after my dad died, I actually know from, from my head Psalm 23 and 91 because of every night we used to repeat. So the white witches, what, what, they, what they do is that they use it because they believe that there is a power in those Bible verses, like protection. When you are declaring it, you are releasing protection over your life. And that's kind of like why they do it. And I think it's also Psalm 91. There is something related with the spiritual warfare there. And that's also why they use Psalm 90, 91. Could you tell us about your training with the black witch and how she even came into the picture? Because at this time you were being trained by a white witch. So how did this black witch even come into the picture? Okay, so what happened was that after we moved to Spain, we were living in there. So the white witch came, she started to train me, but then my dad had to move to a different city in Spain to work. So we moved and we stopped having contact with this uh, white witch in Spain. But my mom used to have a best friend from Colombia that she also used to be a witch. I think she is still a witch. Um, so that was my mom's best friend. So then we moved to this city in Spain and suddenly my mom attracted these witches again, but this time they were black witches, but we didn't know. So when my mom started to talk to this witch, uh, that her friend from Colombia, the, this witch called my mom and told her, you have opened the doors to your house to a person and she is not coming with the right, with the, with the right reason. She is not coming with a good heart. And so this person used to tell my mom that she was there to, the, to bring destruction to our house, that we have to be careful, that she was a witch of, of high rank. But obviously my mom thought that she was jealous because the witches are territorial. So uh, uh, she, this witch in Colombia used to come to our house, see us in the spirit, release things like good things and all of that. So now she realized 
that there was a witch of high rank and she couldn't anymore astro project because now someone was taking over the house. So this witch came to the house, uh, the black one, and the same thing happened. She saw me and she said, wow, your daughter has something. We need to train her. But she was like desperate. She was like, we need to uh, train her. We need to consecrate her. We need to give her to, to a principality. She didn't say principality, but she said, we need to give her to a spirit guy because he is going to train her and, and, and guide her in this journey. So my mom, for the second time, hear that. So she was like, okay, let's do it. So we did a ritual, like a ceremony. And that's when, when they uh, consecrated me to this uh, spirit guy, to this principality that is a demon and now he became my spirit guy he became the one that uh, i used to go to every, every time that i needed something good at, and bad i used to feel his presence in the middle of the night in the room smell him because he used to have a particular smell he used to break things in the house but i knew that it was him so he used to just come in, in the middle of the night but i knew that you know he was my friend and it was fine so this black witch also started to teach me that you know that if people are if you don't like people you can actually do things on, on people so she started to kind of like train me to now manipulate people's feelings emotions do things on them and slowly i just started to become yeah i just started to cross from being a white witch to now black magic now when you say you had a spiritual guide that kind of reminds me of guardian angels, how the Bible says that God's children are protected in Psalm 91, you know. Um, so is it kind of like an imitation uh, with your spirit guides as opposed to having a guardian angel? So I will say it this way. When we become Christians, uh, we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that guides us, consoles us. So the Holy Spirit now becomes like our, our best friend. Right, so we start to have that intimacy with the Holy Spirit. He is the one that tells us what we have to do, decisions, warnings. So He is the one. I would say that is the same thing for the occultism. When someone is assigned an a spirit guide, that spirit guide now now becomes like their best friend. That they can like go to this spirit guy, you know, ask him for permission for things to help him with to help the person with certain a curses or witchcraft that that they want to do so i don't want to compare it because the, there's no one like the holy spirit the holy spirit is the unique the only one and but it's kind of like sim similar we have the holy spirit they they have a spirit guide demons so the devil is the great imitator yeah. tell us what happened to your household once this black witch came in because i know you were having some issues with your uh mother and your brother and stuff like that what happened that changed your family forever so i started to become really suicide like i just started to have all of these thoughts of oh, i just want to die i also become alcoholic my family didn't even know because they used to just be working all day my mom my dad so i used to come after after school and just drinking so i just started to have depression um these alcoholic issues also, I tried to commit suicide multiple times. And also the things at my house were turning really black, a lot of arguments, fights. So there was like the atmosphere there. It was like really heavy and impossible to be there. So what happened and what completely changed our, our lives was that one day this black witch came and she started, she told me and my mom that why don't we do a ritual in the house? to you know to invite demons and speak to them for our future or things like this so we did a ritual at the entrance of the house we were in a circle because circle means unity so we started in a circle with this witch with other two more witches and we started to speak in tongues because that's how can, can, kind of like you access the spiritual realm is through tongues so we started to speak in tongues and suddenly this demon came and possessed this, this woman, this black witch. So she started to speak to my mom and this demon started to say, someone in your house is going to die in one week. And my mom started to cry. So we, I started to be like, oh, I have never experienced that before of someone telling you, oh, someone in your house is going to die. So 
uh, the demon starts to ask, do you want to know who it is? Do you want to know who it is? And I turned to my mom and I told her, no, 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 let's close this. I, 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 we shouldn't know who is going to die. We closed the session. That was like really strong. We leave it there. By that point, I was living with this black witch because there was a lot of stuff going on in my house. It was like impossible to be there because of the arguments, all the heaviness in the house, suicide, all of that. So I just went with her. So when I went with her, obviously we keep doing things, rituals or things like that. And what happened is that one week after we did a ritual, my mom called her and I, I was living with her. My, my, my mom called her uh, on a Sunday at four or five in the morning. And she and my mom told her, you guys need to come home quick, something happened. And we just went and she the whole way, she had like a smile on her face and I didn't know why. So when we arrived, I saw my mom with my little brother that he was two, but but, but that point outside the house. And she was crying like, like crazy. She couldn't stop crying and crying and crying. And I was like, what happened? What happened? But she couldn't even, she couldn't even, she was traumatized. So I went inside the house and as soon as I went in, there was like this heavy atmosphere that it was like causing me to walk like that because of the heaviness, it felt like a whole blanket on you. And I thought that my dad left. I, my, I was thinking, oh, my dad left us. He left the house. He is gone. He has abandoned us. That was my thought. So when I went inside the room, the room, the light was on. So I, 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 I checked and nothing was there, but all of this atmosphere in the house, I have to run outside. When I run outside, I tr turn left and we have a storage there with, with some things there. I opened the door and my dad was hung there. So he committed suicide in there. So from that moment, there was destruction in my house. Uh, then my other brother that he was 11 by that point, he was staying that weekend with my aunt. So when he came, he never cried. He just got that, <gasps> that anger. And that's something that even until today, he's trying to battle with like that spirit of anger. So my house was completely destroyed. Um, after a few weeks, I left my mom because I had so much hate for her. Uh, I keep blaming her. This is your fault. And obviously because of all the abuse, that I suffer from her, from my great grandmother. I just had so much anger, hate, rejection, abandonment, anxiety, depression, suicide, everything that you can imagine. I had it uh, right there. So I left my mom, my brother also, she took him to a different place because she, she, she just couldn't take everything. So our family was completely destroyed. My brother, since he was like, since my dad died, he started to get involved in drugs. So he become a drug dealer. He just become uh, having all types of drugs. And for many years, he, he, he um, battled all of that. And then, yes, that's how my family got basically destroyed. This witch came, her assignment was to destroy. So what happened that after that happened, this witch disappeared from our lives. And the white witch that was in Colombia, she called my mom and she told her, look, I, I have the feeling that something happened because I'm trying to astral project into your house and there is like a black cover that is not allowing me to go inside your house. And I know that something happened to your husband. I think he's dead. She keeps saying that, that, that she could feel that he was dead. So my mom obviously replied to her and she was like, yes, he committed suicide. And the woman said to my mom, I told you that that person, that witch, was there with the purpose of destroying your family, of ruining your family. So from that moment, that witch disappeared completely from our lives, the black witch. And uh, yes, we just lost com all connection with her from, from that point. Now, how old were you during this time? I was 18 at that point. Hey, wow, so you're pretty young. So what that black magic or what that black witch did during that time was she put a curse on your house. Now, do you believe that she knew your father would die or did she just know that there would be a death in the family? Because obviously what she did have, had an effect on the outcome of what happened to your father. So what she wanted to do was destroying all of us so my mom would be alone because there was something about my mom that she wanted. She wanted my mom to be alone. She came, even after my dad died, she told to the other witch, I just want 
lose my mom i just want Luz to be alone because when she's going to be alone she's going to come to look for me so we don't know what she actually wanted with her but her plan was kind of like train me equip me try to kill me because she couldn't do it so now she has to go for my dad but at the same time a spirit of suicide and death was released also over my life because after my dad died i tried to commit suicide i lost the count of the amount of times that i tried to commit suicide you uh, used to just drink a lot and cut myself half pills in and out of hospital so it just become like a routine now so the things that she released, she wanted to kill. She, the enemy comes to kill and destroy. That was her plan. That was what the enemy was trying to do through her. Destroy us as a family and kill us. So obviously when we were doing the ritual, that demon was releasing something into the atmosphere. And what happened is that is as, as Christians, we spend more time in the natural, we are going to miss what is happening in the spirit. This is why we need to live a life consecrated, a life in the spirit. So we need to see the attacks of the enemy so we can see what the enemy is trying to do. Because before it manifests in the natural realm, first it happens in the spirit and then it manifests in here, right? Because it is uh, connected. So that's why if the Lord is showing us something is happening in, in the spirit, we have the authority in Jesus to stop what the enemy is trying to do and stop that from manifesting here. But because by that point, we didn't know, you know, we knew about demons and these kind of things, but we didn't know that, wow, what she actually did, that demon was releasing death and destruction. And if by, that, if by that point we knew that we have the authority in Jesus to stop that, we could have come against that and stop that death. But obviously we, we didn't know. So this is when I go to, you, you know, the power of the declarations. What are you declaring? is going to make an impact and is going to change. Wow, that's some good stuff. That's really good. Um, I actually want to go a little bit back to what you were talking about, how the witch was speaking in tongues when you were in a circle, because I know you mentioned that when you were four years old, that uh, a demonic being had come in and was speaking in tongues, playing a guitar. Clear it up for a lot of Christians who misunderstand the Bible, who believe that speaking in tongue is of the devil, because, you know, we're hearing about how the demons speak in tongues, but we have power when we speak in tongues too, but it's a different tongue. So could you just explain that and clear the air for those who may not understand? Yeah. So I just want to leave this clear. And is that the enemy copies absolutely everything. The enemy doesn't create. The enemy copies so when you see the rainbow that was a covenant that was given for us now the enemy took it for the lgbt and, and for them that's wrong that was given to us god created that the same thing happened with other things like salt wine oil that now these people in the occultism are using and now we are we are to scare as children of god to use them because we think that's witchcraft no god also gave that to us and the enemy has took that from us the same thing with tongues they understand tongues so we as children of god we have also the angelic tongues that is at that direct language with heaven that the enemy doesn't understand so for people that are saying tongues are not that that's from the enemy you need to be careful because you might say that that's the enemy that's evil but you might go in against the holy spirit when you are saying that and if you go against the holy spirit it says that you that the father can forgive you anything but not going against the holy spirit if you are saying that something is evil when in reality is from the holy spirit you are putting yourself into a course because you are literally saying that's not the holy spirit the holy spirit is evil the enemy they use they speak in tongues evil tongues they communicate like that we as children we as christian as children of god we have also that access to a speaking in tongues and the enemy copies everything from us they just want to copy everything from us so for those that are saying that that is evil i will advise you to pray about it as the holy spirit but also repent because you might be going against the Holy Spirit. Now, you mentioned salt. Ever since you told me this, I've had an urge to use salt now. <laughs> so you said that, you know, in the Bible, we already know the Bible um, says that salt is used for many things. 
Now explain how witches use salt because I did not know that witches use salt for certain rituals, but something inside of me, I don't know if I have a vitamin deficiency or what, but now I want salt to <laughs> clean. So I don't know. So could you just uh, elaborate on that for me? Yeah, so um, witches um, it is actually no new, like the new age now, they are just having all these soaps with salt to cleanse you to you know for your energy so it's not actually new the salt is being used for so many years for the properties the different properties but the witches use salt for like healing they they use salt for like cleansing because they believe that the salt cleanse you also to break courses and this is where i go witches use salt to break courses also, they use salt for cleanse uh, their magic tools, but they, the, the, the black magic, so the witches that use black magic, they use salt for like cursing people, hexing and biting people. So that's what they use the salt. Now people are going to say, well, that's not in the Bible. How can you say that uh, we as Christians, we can use salt as we use oil or as we use wine? Where it says in 2 of Kings 2, 19 to 22, that Elisha did a prophetic act with salt to heal the water. And it says that he declared the word of the Lord. And he said, I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. And we even see that even Jesus in Matthew 5, 13, it says that, that we are the salt of this earth. And there is a lot of Bible verses that also talk about how we can use the salt, how actually even when a, um, when a baby is born, that you can use salt in his belly button to break the courses. You can, uh, it says in the Bible that you can also use salt to cleanse the offering. So there is a lot of Bible verses that actually speak about salt. So which is also use salt for cursing. So this is where I go. As a Christian, I said before, every prophetic act not guided by the Holy Spirit becomes witchcraft. So obviously the Holy Spirit has to be guiding you to do a, a prophetic act. But when I'm doing deliverance on people, the salt, we can use it against witchcraft and to dry death and to cleanse the waters as the prophet Elisha did. So the witches use the salt for cursing. So now we are using the salt to remove the curse. Now we can use the salt to remove the curse, to dry uh, uh, um, infirmities, death, as the prophet Elisha did. But what happened is that the church don't understand a spiritual warfare. The church is not fighting against the enemy because the church doesn't understand a spiritual warfare. And now we are too scared to use the weapons that have been given to us. So now the enemy is not as scared like of taking everything that was given to us, like the soul, all of these things, the tongues, all of these things that were given to us to fight the enemy. Now we are too scared of using them because we are thinking that that is witchcraft and needs no witchcraft. The enemy doesn't copy, the enemy, the enemy doesn't create, the enemy copies absolutely everything. And the same thing happens with oil, which is use essential oils for healing, for finances. Uh, protection for cleansing and we see in the bible that a lot of oils that we can use like the mirror like a, a, a hyssop cassia and we see that we can also do anointing oils and it says in james 5 for tim is anyone among you among you is sick let them call the end elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with all so we see that we can also use the this this uh, oils that the witches are also using they also which is a do prophetic acts with water to cleanse to remove and now we we are just as children of god too scared of using any of these things when in reality these are weapons that the lord has given us the holy communion is another prophetic act the bread uh, the wine because when you are having that you are having the blood of jesus and when the blood of jesus comes inside of you the light of the life and the light of christ is coming up inside of you and this is what happens that the witches and the satanists when they are doing rituals they are actually the sacrifices that they do they drink the blood and they eat the the the, the body parts of the animals of or the humans or the babies because they understand that there is power they understand that by uh, that for them to access the spiritual realm there has to be a sacrifice 
And this is what we as children of God, we don't understand that Jesus is the way, but he is not the only way. Jesus is the only way to access, but there are other ways that people can access, which is a Satanism, Buddhist, all of these people can access the spiritual realm through a sacrifice. That's why they continuously have to do sacrifice, animal sacrifice, human sacrifice, baby sacrifice, drain the blood, eat the bodies to access that and to gain power. When in reality, we have the perfect sacrifice that was Jesus Christ. And when you understand the sacrifice that he did on the cross for us, the only and unique sacrifice, that blood, that he left in the cross for us. When you understand that, now you know, wow, gee, the Holy Spirit lives in me. Now, the power that Jesus Christ has, I have the same authority, the same power. Now you understand, wow, the blood of Jesus is powerful. And now you are doing the Holy Communion with a different revelation. When you understand that we don't have to sacrifice any more animals anymore, like in the Old Testament, when they have to continue to do those sacrifices. Now you understand, wow, Jesus was the only sacrifice perfect sacrifice and now you have access to the light and life of Jesus because of his blood and I believe that is a powerful revelation that many people don't understand amen so basically what you're saying is there's many avenues to these rituals and healings and all this stuff and we have access to it too and I just want to clear up how you said Jesus is not the only way you're not talking about heaven I know that because Jesus is the only way to heaven. But what you're saying is that there are many ways to do different uh, yeah. rituals and healings and all that, right? So it says even in the Bible, in Matthew, when Jesus is telling the parable about saying that, uh, uh, that the sheep can enter through the gate, but it says that the enemy can enter through another window, it says, which means that, you know, there are, there are these, these people are accessing this realm through this window and Jesus is calling them thieves. He is calling them like the sheep and the pastors are entering through the main gate. But then there are others that are using the windows to jump in and he is calling them thieves. So, which means that Jesus, he is the only way and the real way, but there is other ways. But these people that are accessing this realm of the spirit, but these different ways, they are jumping through a different window and they are thieves. Jesus is calling them thieves. So that's what I mean by Jesus is the only way, but there are other di different ways. As it says in Matthew, in the parable that he is trying to say, he is calling these, these people that are jumping through the windows thieves. So that's what these people that are accessing the spiritual realm for all these di different ways are. They're, 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 they are thieves because they are trying to access something that belongs to us. But obviously they don't know the way, but we know the way. There's only one way and it's through Jesus Christ. Now, all these things that you mentioned, did you do any of these? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is why you're so knowledgeable about it, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, now let's jump into the astral projection i know you mentioned it earlier how um the white witch and the black witch astral projected and viewed your house did you astral project and could you explain astral projection so astral projection is when um is when people are literally uh, like they are leaving their body and they can travel to different places they can travel even to like cities countries so they transfer themselves and there is something that is called the silver core that is in Ecclesi ecclesiastes and it, it it talks about the silver core and also it says in ecclesiastes that when the silver core is broken death comes which means that there is something that is connecting us from this physical body to our spirit so when that silver core is broken death comes so that is what basically when people are astro projecting there is like a thin line that is connecting these two and that's why they can astro, astro project and i learned since since, since yes yeah, since I, I was really really young to astro project and i remember even like going to in the middle of the night go and see my best friend and 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 different things that you used to um, that i used to do also 
witches and satanists also do this when they want to release courses in houses. So let's say that you are hating someone and you just wanna go and release someone. They can astro project to that house. They can release principalities in that house. If you want the, the marriage to be broken, you can release adultery, the spirit of adultery into the husband so the family break. You can release infirmities, you can release poverty. Even you can astro project and go to certain regions and cities. If you, have, if you are of high rank, you can even go to like cities and places and from there course neighborhoods because if you uh, because this is what happened that these people understand territory right they know that they don't have to go to one family if they go to the whole city to the to the whole neighborhood and from that place they release courses and destruction in all the neighborhood automatically all the families are going to be affected by that thing that they are releasing that's why it's so powerful when we are doing a, a prayers walking around the neighborhood you are just there releasing the power of jesus and this is what i do during halloween one day before i get wine which represents the blood of jesus and i just go all around my neighborhood speaking in tongues and spraying the blood of jesus declaring that uh, uh, um, that that place has been redeemed that the blood of jesus is covering all sin that the blood of jesus is protecting so when you understand that now you see a spiritual warfare in a different level. So that's why uh, uh, the, 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 this is what happened with astral projection and these people when they uh, um, travel to other places to even destroy families and cities doing astral projection. I've heard many times of people leaving their body. Like for me, I, I lifted up out of my body once, but um, what happens so does the soul leave the body or does the spirit leave the body so it says that when you leave the body there is like an astral kind of like a body astral body that is there and the soul is there in this astral body so when you are living that is what you're living and that silver core is what is connecting one and another so it's your soul that leaves in yeah okay it's like the astral body that kind of like uh, 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 ha that you have kind of like the soul there in this astral body. That's really amazing because when you told me this and when I learned this from you, um, I actually heard it from another ex witch, but you actually confirmed what they actually told me. And I begin to tell people this because I looked that up in the Bible because you said, Jennifer, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. So I looked it up. It's in Ecclesiastes, I believe. 12 verse 6 and king solomon is talking about the silver cord and when the silver cord is broken then that's the end of life why don't churches know this what is happening what is it <laughs> because we don't read the bible my people perish because of lack of knowledge i believe there is literally a, a something blinding people when they are reading the bible they don't understand what the, what they are reading a lot of people i'm sure they have read a lot of times about that, but they never ask, what is that? Let me Google it. Let me maybe go to the Hebrew and try and, and see the meaning. They have never done that, but that's because people, the enemy has blinded the eyes of the believers and the unbelievers. And even when people are reading the, the Bible, they don't realize that there is power in what you are reading. There's a lot of revelation there. Mm. Now you mentioned that these witches can actually project go inside your house, see whatever they want, cast spells by speaking, they can do what they want. Now, is there certain houses that are protected that they cannot go into? Obviously, if you are a person, if you're a Christian and you have closed portals, closed doors in, in, in your life, let's say that you live a holy life, worship intimacy with the Holy Spirit, you are protected. And this happened to me. When I became Christian after a few years, in a dream, this witch keep, uh, I had a dream where the Holy Spirit allowed me to see what it was happening. And I entered into a house, but I remember in the dream, I had like a cloth of invisibility. Nobody could see me. So I just started to walk into this house. And when I opened one door, I saw this witch with another witch in the bed right? Because in dreams, bed means intimacy. It doesn't mean sexual intercourse. Beds mean intimacy, unity. So I saw these two witches 
in this bed and they were trying to see where I was. They were trying to do witchcraft on me and my mom to see where we were, what we were doing and trying to bring us back to them. But I remember see them trying to do these things and they keep saying, I don't know what, what is happening. I'm trying to see, but there is like a really bright light that I, I is not allowing me to see. It looks like the, 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 there is like a white light around them and I can't see anything. And when I wake up from that, the Holy Spirit told me, I am protecting you now. They can see where you are. They can do any harm to you because I am your protector now. And that's where I also understood that in the Bible, there is something called the cloth of, of invisibility or the golden. I, I don't know how they, they translated it in English, but it's something called like the golden cup or something, which means that there is a cloth of invisibility that we also have. And this is why I didn't want to say this, but you know why Harry Potter has the thing of invisibility, the, the blanket. I don't know if, if you have ever seen it, that he, he, he puts kind of like a blanket and he becomes invisible and nobody can see him. That is the same thing that we also have in the Bible, which it says that we have a cloth of, of invisibility. So when I wake up from the dream, the Holy Spirit told me, I am your protector, the blood of Jesus is covering you now and they can come and see you and release anything against you. So these witches and, sat and satanists can go to a house that there is a house that lives in worship, in intimacy, in holiness. You are repenting, renouncing, breaking courses. That is a house that is automatically protected by the blood of Jesus. And this is why we have also so many Christians that they claim themselves Christians, but they are living in so, in so much poverty, death, destruction. And they even say, there's witches coming in my house. Yes. Are you living in fornication? You watching pornography, are you living in adultery? You are thinking that because you are Christian, the title give, gives you protection. I'm sorry, the title doesn't give you protection because it says in the Bible, many will call my name, but who are you? The same thing, you need to live a life of consecration, holiness, and then in that moment is when the enemy sees danger and is in that moment when there is no open portal, portals for the enemy to come to you. What happens if a witch is out of their body and their astral projecting all over the place, wherever they decide to go and the silver cord is cut, how is it cut if it is cut and what happens to that person when it's cut? So what happened is that if they get out, they can die. They literally, and the silver cord is broken, they die. That's it, they go to hell because they die doing sin, they die. And this is what happens when people are meditating, that they are doing meditation and they are astral projecting, not only witches, because nowadays this new age movement has become so common that even Christians are doing it. And they are just like meditating and astral projecting. But what happened, I have here a lot of cases that people, when they are meditating, they die. And people say they die meditating with a smile in their face, when in reality, they die because probably a demon didn't allow them to come back and the silver cord was broken and they die. And I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I hear someone saying one, so her family was Christian, but she wasn't. And she, she was really involved in um, meditation. And what happened is that in one of these uh, 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 travel uh, experiences that she had, she had that she left her body. And when she tried to come back, she said that she couldn't because there was demons trying to choke her and they were trying to stop her from coming back. And she saw that she was dying and, and she now realized that there was a Jesus that her mom used to pray to. So now she is, is started to scream, Jesus, help me, help me, Jesus. And she said that she, hear, she heard a voice that said, don't do that anymore. And it kind of like pushed her back and she said that, oh, that she wake up and she said that from that moment she repented and she never again and she gave her life to Christ. So that is the danger of meditation that you think, you know, is harmless and just living my body experience it, but you don't know. Then if a demon is coming, trying to stop you and if you can come back, you die because if the silver cord is broken, that, that, that is because there's death and then you can't come back anymore and you just go to hell because you died doing something that, you know, sinning. Yeah, now a lot of the avenues that does this is yoga and uh, 
uh, martial arts. Now, yoga is beginning to be very accepted in the Christian community, which baffles my mind. Uh, you'll hear people say, well, I'll just meditate on Jesus then while I do it. Or <laughs> what would you say to that? Because it doesn't make any sense. I mean, like we know that, you know, yoga is, I don't know if it's Hindu or Buddhist, one of those, but it's that one of those. But what did you, what would you say to those people who just say, I'll just think about Jesus while I'm doing yoga. But at the same time, well, you have the ability. <laughs> if you are saying I'm thinking in Jesus while I'm doing yoga, it's the same thing that I'm like saying, I'm just thinking in Jesus while I'm doing drugs. <laughs> you are still sinning, like it doesn't make sense. So people, like my people perish because of lack of knowledge. That is the same thing again. People don't understand. Do research fast about it, but you don't have to even too fast. If you go to Google and you start to read the history of yoga, meditation, martial arts, all of these things, you see that every position represent is the invocation of a demon so even though you are not doing it knowingly you are doing it unknowingly you are still sinning just because you don't know what is bringing it doesn't make you it doesn't make you less sinner you are doing it unknowingly knowingly or unknowingly you are doing it which is you are opening a portal and it's sin and each one of these positions you are manifesting and kind, kind of like calling these demons because before that's what they used to do it for the martial arts every position used to bring energy and this type of demons and this is something that people don't understand so i just don't understand how the church have become so relax with these things and allowing even new age coming into the pulpits i see a lot of churches online churches now inviting this new age whole thing of manifestation all this new thing of witchcraft coming into the altar into the holy ground of god and they are just bringing the people of god the children into this and the people my people perish because of lack of knowledge and it's so dangerous that people are playing with these things people are playing with the holy how can you say the name of jesus and doing those things dash that like you are opening a portal for the enemy to come to you and then you are saying why am i struggling with depression why am i struggling with infirmities why my children are on drugs well you open a portal to the enemy you are giving the enemy the legal right to come to your to your life this is why we have to be it's not about being legalistic but be careful with the things that you are doing because we are in a continuous warfare we are in a continuous spiritual warfare and the enemy is just trying is just there trying to see when you are going to open a portal for him to come and destroy you so this is why we have to be so much careful with each one of these things now i remember you saying that when the back to the silver cord when the silver cord is cut they get lost in the spiritual place what's happening there so what happened the silver core is 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 cut they don't get lost they die they literally just the demons i can i mean i have never ex experienced that and i just pray that i'm never going to experience it they don't get lost it just they they literally they are just die and what happened is that like when you die it says in the bible that the angel came the angel when moses died the angel came to the angel of death but then the, the, there was a fight between two different types of angels, dead and life, trying to pick up a Moses, right? So this is the 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 the, the same thing that happened when someone died, that there is a fight for this person. And when someone died with the silver cord is broken, I can imagine that this demon, this angel of death, comes and takes the person and it just goes to hell. It can't go go to heaven because it died doing like sinning. Now this reminds me of a Disney movie. And we know that Disney is heavily rooted in witchcraft, which is why almost all their movies, if not all of them, have witchcraft in it somewhere or another. And it reminds me of Hercules when Hercules' uh, love interest, Meg, goes to hell. He dives down into Hades to get her. And the next thing you know, I think you see two or three witches laughing and there's a silver or there's a cord mm -hmm. and they get out a pair of scissors and they go to cut it and they couldn't cut it because it turned gold and because one for he's supposed to be a god so you can't kill god right so this is what this reminds me of is that the 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 satanic realm knows this the the occult world knows about this stuff but the church really needs to because all this stuff is being put in our faces left and right 
uh, it's being taught to our children, like you were saying earlier, and we just think it's entertainment, but the devil, it seems as if that he shows what he does in open air, but we just nonchalantly or become very lackadaisy to whatever um, he's doing now. Also, you said that there is an origin of witchcraft on the earth. Where is that? Yeah, so um, there is like the witchcraft comes from somewhere and this is what people don't un un understand. I have hear a lot of people saying like, where all these demons come from? Like, like they are not even in the Bible. Did we just make all of these demons up? But it says it like there is a lot of history also in the in the Bible, but you can also research. And in Joshua 3.10, we see that the people of Israel, they have to face seven nations. When they went to conquer the land of Canaan, they have to go... A against uh, seven nations, which were the Canaanites, uh, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, and Hamorites, so all of these seven nations. And each one of these nations had their own God. So they had in total these seven nations, seven gods, each one of them. So what happened is that when, there is, uh, when, the, when the people of God, they conquer these lands, they conquer these nations, these nations have to, like they left that place and and they have to cross to Africa. And then when they arrived to Africa, they expanded and also idolatry expanded. So this is why uh, uh, you find in Africa, the seven African powers, Elewa, Obatala, Ogun, Chango, Yemaja, Oshun, all of these one represent each one of these gods that came uh, from these seven nations. And this is why you go to Africa and there's so much witchcraft in Africa because this is where it comes so what happened is that uh, uh, then the, the black people in Africa, they were taken to America, they were taken as, as slaves. So what happened that all of their beliefs, all of their uh, idolatry was so strong that they continue to practice that and the rituals and, 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 and what happened is that their culture mixed with these other cultures in, Af in, in America. And this is why the Santeria, Voodoo, Macumba, all of these occultists in types of witchcraft were born because all of these African gods, all of these demons, all of these seven African powers came to here. And this is why in Santeria, they know about Elewa, Obatala, Ongu, Chango, they know Yemaya, there's even like songs in Cuba that they sing to uh, these demons and that's where they come from because when they were slaves, they, 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 they came to uh, America, they took their gods, they took their occultism, and their witchcraft, it mixed with, um, with the culture there and this is where all of these things are born. It's uh, Santeria, Voodoo, all of these spirits and principality come from and this is what people don't understand that yet. Yes, they do exist. You just need to read the Bible, go to uh, look for more history and actually realize that all of these things, the seven African powers comes also because of all these seven nations that uh, the people of God were trying to fight in Canaan. Mm. Now, from there, you even said that, or I even believe this too, is that uh, because of this, there are generational curses put on people's uh, families and them not even knowing it. Um, let's talk about one, for instance, poverty. How does a generational curse of poverty occur? So what happened is that if you are experiencing a lot of poverty in your life, poverty, lack, ruin, a lot of this, and you feel that you have literally, it says in the Bible that in Proverbs that, that there is like a broken pocket that the money keeps falling. I, I, I don't know how exactly it says, but it says something about an, a broken pocket and where the money falls. And some people say, I feel like, you know, like I have a broken pocket, like all the money keeps falling and I don't even know where the money is going. And then all these debts, uh, poverty and lack. But what happened with poverty is that uh, uh, it might come because of dif dif different things. It might come beca because of witchcraft, because witchcraft um, releases poverty because of the bloodshed. It can also come because of murder, abortion. So if you have done any of these things, you are opening the portal to poverty. Why? Because when there's bloodshed, the blood falls on the land and it produces a curse. This is why when Jesus died, his blood 
touches the ground to make it to heal it and to remove the cords. But now you need to go with that re re revelation and repent for that bloodshed, for that murder, for that witchcraft, whatever it is. And you apply the blood of Jesus into that, into your land, into what it have come uh, um, into that course. And you just, with the blood of Jesus, it removes the course of poverty. But poverty can come, as, a, a, as I said, generational, if, if, the, if, if there's been witchcraft, if there's been abortions in your, in your family, murder, uh, sacri sacrifices, all of that opens the portal for poverty, lack and ruin to come in your family. I just want to go back really quick and we'll go back to this topic. I just want to touch one more time on um, on astral projection. Now, you mentioned also that Christians do not astral project, but they transport. And there's a difference. What's the difference? Well, the difference is that when you astral project, you are doing it because you want to do it. So this is what happened. That people in the occultism, they feel self-sufficient they feel that they don't need anyone they feel power they 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 think that they have authority they feel that they can manipulate and control everything so even when when they are astro projecting they they are just doing it because they want to do it right but with us as christians we can do that too but as i said everything is guided by the holy spirit and we see in the bible that there is still in transportation. And we see that in Acts 8, 26, when Philip was taken to Asotus, and we see that um, El Eunuch, I think it is, I always get the name wrong. <laughs> uh, unit. Yeah, it, it is that he saw when Philip was taken, and it doesn't say that Philip died, he said that Philip in Acts, that Philip was taken to a different city. So it is possible to be teletransported. And I have here a lot of people, ministers of God, that they said that they have experienced that, that they have been tele teletransported into different places. And even uh, me, myself i had after i become christian and i broke all of these things i have a really strong experience when i believe i was taken out of my body i wasn't astro projecting because i stopped doing that i renounced i broke all of that and i remember the days before this experience happened i had a dream and in the dream uh, uh, someone in, in authority came and gave me a bible verse when i opened the bible verse it says if you walk if you are swimming in the waters, you won't, how is that? If you are swimming in the waters, you won't sink. If you are passing through the fire, you won't burn, something like that. And I remember when I had this, this, this experience, I wasn't dreaming because I know when I'm, you know, when I used to astro project the feeling that you get. And I remember that something in me was taking and I saw myself in bed and I was like, oh, I'm astro, astro projected. So I was trying to uh, stop it. But I remember that this thing took me, it, it, it was a, a, a white being dressed in white. And he took me and we entered into like a cavern, like, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a cave. And I was placed in a platform and I knew where he was taking me. And I look at him and I told him, I don't want to go there. Please don't take me. And he opened the Bible and remind me of the Bible verse. And the Bible verse that I was reading was, if you pass through the fire, you will burn. Automatically, the, path for, the platform started to go down. And I just started to feel all that fire coming from that place. I couldn't see anything because it was dark. You know, black, okay, is even darker. It's, not, it's, it's, like, it's literally really, really dark. And not like on here where people are screaming and crying and all of those voices at one, ah, it's like, like pain. And I, and I was in that place and I could feel all of that. I didn't see any fire or anything. It was all dark. I could hear people screaming and crying. And at the same time, I was feeling all of the fire coming in my legs. So I, I just closed my eyes and I keep saying, take me, please take me, take me, take me. It was like only like 10 seconds, but it was such a strong experience. Then suddenly this angel, I believe it was an angel. He took me out and suddenly I just saw myself going up, like up, up, up really high. And we crossed different things. And suddenly when we were arriving, I saw a city in the sky. It was beautiful. And I could hear these voices singing hallelujah, like worshiping hallelujah. The presence was so strong that I started to cry. It was like you couldn't, you couldn't control that. I started to cry as this white, as this angel was taking me there. 
he put me in this city and it was a city so white and shiny. And then suddenly it's like I, I got a vision in that place of the earth and this place. I saw two cities, the earth look so much pollution, dark, dirty. And I was looking at this city, so white, perfect, shiny. And it was like, wow, this city here on earth is just in darkness. This is how the earth is. It's in pollution, darkness, dirty. And this sitting here was so clean, beautiful. With I even when I was walking in the street, the street had like gold, like gold stones of gold and different diamonds on the floor and flowers. And it was just like beautiful. And I remember when I experienced all of that, I came back to my body. I saw my body. I, it just dropped me there and I wake up again and I realized, wow, I wasn't astro projecting. That was actually took me out and I was, and I experienced all of these things. So it is possible for Christians to tell it, teletransport as in the bible says but it's also possible when you, you know you are taken out and the spirit is controlling the experience because as i said the most important thing is which spirit is controlling the experience for us is the holy spirit the holy spirit is our source he is the one that is controlling and taking us and and allowing us to experience all of those things so it is possible for christians to experience these things you mentioned when a person becomes born again not all the time generational curses are broken, but a lot of Christians believe everywhere, they believe everywhere that when you become saved, every single curse is broken. Is that true? It's not true because actually people are lazy. People just want everything for free. They want salvation for free. They just think that by saying, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, forgive me all my sins. That's it. It's done. No, it's not done. We need to stop thinking that by doing those generic prayers, everything is done. It's not done. Yes, salvation comes to you, but there is a process that you need to start going. It says in Colossians that we need to break the decrees that are against our lives. We need to take them to the cross and by the blood of Jesus, when we apply the blood of Jesus in those decrees that were against our lives, we are exposing principalities. So it's giving us there a, 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 like a kind of like what we have to do when we come to Christ. Yes, you come to Christ and you say, forgive all my sins. What type of sins you will go to forgive you. We need to stop doing generic prayers and actually be specific because it says confess and you will be forgiven. You need to repent, you need to renounce, but you also need to be specific. So this is why if you are saying, well, Jesus came, I asserted Jesus, everything is done. I don't have to go through anything, any courses. I don't have anything is done. Then I ask you, why are you suffering with a lot of infirmities? Why are you going through divorce? Why are your children on drugs in the street? Why are you going through poverty? Why is the church leaving each one of these things? So I believe that sometimes God allow us to go through things to teach us things and to uh, uh, help us grow our faith. But also we need to have discernment and understanding that some of these things might come because of generational things, because of iniquities. So for instance, you are uh, struggling with a marriage, with your marriage and your marriage uh, it, like, is, is falling into pieces. Maybe you need to go down the line and maybe find out that your mom was divorced, your grandmother was divorced, your great grandmother, that is exactly what happened with all in in my family we didn't only have occultism for five generations each one of the women in our family where their husbands died and i was the next one die or divorce and i was the next one and when i married my husband there was a time that i wanted to divorce and i told my mom i am done i just went around and when we realized oh maybe it's an iniquity we realized, wow, my great-grandmother, her husband died, the other one died, she divorced, my mother, she divorced, my mom, my, my dad died, so then me, I wanted to divorce, so we realized, wow, there's actually an iniquity there. We came against that, we repent, we renounce, and then we command that spirit to live, and it's closed, and I'm being with my husband now for almost nine years, and we are still to, together, so this is what people don't realize. People, Christians, are so lazy. Now, Christians, are the microwave generation where they just want everything put, boop, 
then that's it. And we need to stop that. Your salvation is given by faith, your salvation, but you, it, it even says that you need to work out your salvation with fear and tremble, which means that you still need to work out in each one of these things. You need to find out what is affecting your life, what is giving the enemy a legal right in your life. Maybe it's a generational thing of witchcraft, like in my case, we have a lot of witchcraft, occultism, a spirit guys, even as Christian, as this spirit guy was following me, then tell me why if I became Christian, if I gave my life, my life to Jesus, and I was living a holy life, why this spirit guy was still trying to come harassing me and annoying me? Why? Because there was a legal right that we didn't remove. And how do you remove the legal right by declaring the same way that the legal right was given with your word, you need to remove the legal right with your words. There is a contract that the enemy has against your life, something that you sign in the spirit. Well, you need to come with the blood of Jesus, break the decree and declare that the enemy doesn't have any legal right in that area. But what happened is that now the church are so lazy that they think Jesus has done it all, that's it, I don't have to do anything. And you are just sitting in church every Sunday with the same demon that you came in. And you are thinking that you are free. When in, in, in reality, you probably have a lot of principalities and courses behind you that you haven't broken because when you become Christian, you start a process of transformation because we are a spirit, soul, and body. When we accept Jesus, our spirits get activated. Our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions, we need to work in our soul now, in our mind, in our emotions, because what the enemy grabs is your soul, your mind and your emotions are in captivity. Your spirit is activated, but you start a process of healing. And this is what we call deliverance. This is when we come to helping people with their emotions, with their with their mind. That's why it says the renewing of your mind, renewing of your mind with the word of God. You come through a process of healing your soul. Your spirit now is activated. Now your soul starts to get cleansed, delivered, and that is going to manifest in your body, in your physical physical body in healing, in happiness, in abundance, but that only happens when you understand that you need to come through a process of deliverance in your soul. Now you even mentioned the enemy in the church, how the enemy loves to divide the church. Speaking of that, right, does the Satan, does he tell witches to go to churches and cause division? Oh, yes. <laughs> we have a lot of satanist warlords and witches infiltrated in church a lot of them and people don't realize that yes they go to church yes they go to church especially if their assignment is to division in the church and destroy churches if they are you you, you know if there's some like let's say someone that is taking over 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 a neighborhood and they're releasing their destruction into that place pro poverty drugs and suddenly a church full of the Holy Spirit is coming and is changing the atmosphere in the region, they are, they are going to see that. So now their assignment is to go to that place and destroy that place. So they infiltrate and they go inside that place to basically destroy the church. This is why I have heard so many times of churches that have just been closed because suddenly the, the, or the pastor died or, or, or the head of the house died or there was like adultery or a lot of things happening in that place because something was released and the, uh, and the leadership in there didn't realize. So yes, they, they can sit and they can worship with you every Sunday. Are there any witches who actually hold position in churches? Yeah, huh. you have Je Jezebel. She is a witch. Jezebel is a witch. Control, manipulation, contrary prayers and Jezebel obviously moves in witchcraft. We have a lot of this nowadays and we know that Jezebel's, what, what Jezebel wants is remove and kill the prophetic in a church. Because if the prophetic is activated in a church, it comes against darkness. Because when you understand the prophetic, when you understand the power of the Holy Spirit, when you understand prophetic acts and, the, and all of these things, the enemy is scared of that. So what Jezebel does, Jezebel blinds the church so they don't move in the 
prophetic, so they don't prophesy, so they don't understand all of these prophetic acts, prophetic worship, they don't. So Jezebel, yes, there's a lot of women that are in position in leadership, pastoring churches, that are Jezebelly influenced by a spirit of witchcraft and, and Jezebel controlling and manipulating, impo- like po- po- positioning hands into other people, blinding their spiritual eyes and releasing all of that witchcraft, witchcraft into the church. So if you are in a, in a church where you see that there's been kind of like a Jezebel kind of like take over control and manipulation, run and save your, 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 your life. Don't try to come against that. The only because I have seen people that they that they try to go against the spirit of Jezebel, but this world all also in ranks and in authorities. You can face something that you have been given the authority to go and face against. Okay, I understand that we can go and fight Jezebel, but you need to know that the Holy Spirit has prepared you, trained you, that you have been commissioned, that you have been appointed, and you have been called for the warfare. And this is why so many Christians have counter attacks. They are going to warfare that God hasn't uh, told them to go. So if you are in a church where the, all of this witchcraft is moving, run for your life because your spiritual eyes are going to be blinded. And that stops you from seeing the spirit, from having dreams, visions, and that kind of put you in a position like in a cave you feel that you can speak you feel that you can even share what you are seeing because you feel that you are not accepted in that place so if you are in the place run for your life amen now how can you discern what is happening well how can you discern that there are witches in your church what would you say to those viewing they're like okay i feel like there may be a possibility that i have which is assigned to my church because now all of a sudden we're divided or all of a sudden there's a spirit of heaviness there's many examples so what would you say how would you um encourage everyone to get that discernment so you get the discernment is through the holy spirit also we need to understand and this is something that people don't realize that iniquities and generational courses it says in the bible can cause a spiritual blindness and deafness which means that if your spiritual senses are covered because of iniquity you are not going to be able to see to hear what is happening in the spiritual realm so it's going to be hard for you to discern what is happening this is why working in generational things removing all that clutter from your spiritual eyes from your ears is so important because that's going to open in your spiritual senses to the spiritual realm and then it's going to be easy for you to discern what is happening and what is moving in that place but as you say one of the things that can happen in the church is that there's a lot of heaviness a lot of divisions and obviously at the time of worship you feel that it's just heavy and it doesn't go anywhere also you see that especially the women they are the one controlling controlling manipulating and the pastor is just to to the side and when it shouldn't be like that because we need to understand authority it's not just the woman taking control we need to submit ourselves and you know if the lord has put a a, a pastor and authority in the church we need to honor that but i also see a lot of women taking over controlling and manipulating and doing witchcraft prayers release so if you start to see a lot of control that they are trying to control you to manipulate you so you don't go you are in danger and those are kind of like the 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 signs that you need to look for if you are in a place that's moving in witchcraft now one of the last things i do want to talk about and i think this is a good one is you mentioned to me that the devil understands authority but the church does not could you just break that down because that's a good one yeah, so what people don't un- un- understand is that even darkness, the, the demons understand authority. They move in ranks. This is why you have principalities. This is why you have a strongman. This is when then you have the minions. It's the same way that happened when you are going to war. You have the, you know, the person in the, the sergeant, I, I think it's called. Then you have the soldiers. and you. So it's also wars for ranking. They kind of like submit to the one that's in authority. And this is something that in church we don't realize is that we have authorities and the the enemy is no scary, is not afraid of the church is because the church is divided. 
If you see there's a lot of competition, I have the best voice, I want to be the one that is going to sing the best, I want to be seen, I'm the best that prophesies, I'm the best that cast out demons. So a soul when a competition in church and a house divided, it can prosper. So this is why the enemy is not scared. I can imagine the enemy sitting in churches every Sunday uh, and just like not even move because there's so much division and a divided place can prosper. So that is the issue that we don't understand that there is authority. Even in the Bible says when this um, when this person came to Jesus and say my my uh, 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 my I don't know how he call it my soldier my person my man is ill at home he is possessed can you please do something because I understand authority I am the authority and Jesus said because you understand authority he is now being relieved he's now being healed so we see there there is like a kind of authority and we need to be positioned ourselves under an authority and now there's we see so many headless chicken. I call them headless chicken, which means they don't have a head and they are just walking around with no head, with no cover. Just it's amazing that we have Jesus, but he has also appointed leaders as Apostle Paul and Timothy that he called him my spiritual son. So we see that, that there is an authority. When you are under an authority, there is protection. And you can say, you can say, well, I'm, um, attending an all, all online church. They are my spiritual fathers, but they don't even know you. There has to be intimacy, okay? You can say they are my spiritual fathers and they don't even know who you are. You, it has to be intimate. You have to have a leader, communication, because when you are going through something, you contact them, can you please pray for me? I'm going through this. It has to be intimate. And we see so many headless chicken, and that's why they are suffering from counterattacks from the enemy, because it's not united. You can go to a spiritual warfare alone, they go together in unity. The same has to be with the church. The same has to be with us. If we are going to go to face the enemy, if we are going to go against darkness, we need to be united because that is what the enemy is scared of. Even witches, as I said, understand unity. See, they understand unity. Even when, they, when we used to do these rituals, we used to come in a circle. Circle means unity and power. This is why when Christians are praying, in a circle with the hands together, you can imagine the power that is right there. And that is what witches understand. Circle, that's why all the rituals and all their stuff is in circle. And they grab hands and they are speaking to us. They understand unity and power in that, but we can even do it. We can even pray for five minutes. We can even uh, hold hands and pray together for like 10, 15 minutes, one hour in tongues, releasing the power of God. The church doesn't understand them, and that's the issue. How can we face darkness? How can we fight this spiritual battle if we don't even un understand? We don't even know where we are positioned ourselves. We don't even understand authority. So I think that is the danger, but I'm believing that in this season, the Lord is just raising an army that is united, that is understanding. That's why I also think the Lord is bringing, like removing people from high places, removing authorities, removing leaderships. I believe that there is like a cleansing coming to the church because we are saying to God, we are praying, Lord, bring justice, Lord, bring, bring exposure. But we are not realizing that the church is going to be exposed and cleansed first before the judgment comes to the world is coming to us. So we need to be prepared and we need to be cleansed before that happens, which in fact is happening now. I was just about to say that that's happening right now. The church is being cleansed and we're seeing um, the, separa the separation between the wheat and the tare. Now, there are people who are watching right now who are saying, OK, I believe that I have um, a family of generational curses or I am in rich witchcraft or I need deliverance from jealousy. I need deliverance from gossip. I need deliverance from poverty. I need deliverance from illnesses. How do they get free from deliverance? Because they're wondering, okay, Julie did it. How do I do it? So this is also another thing that people don't understand. People are cutting the leaves of the tree without going to the root. What do I mean by this? I see a lot of people doing deliverance by cutting the leaves of the trees, targeting the minions without understanding what is the strongman. So every strongman 
is assigned different meanings. Let's say this, the strongman, the rejection spirit, right? Is assigned certain meanings. As you say, gossip, jealousy, envy, competency, uh, arrogance, uh, selfishness, uh, low self-esteem, depression, anxiety, suicide, rejection manages all of those minions. So what's happening is that the church is now casting out these two, but obviously they might go because there is power in the name of Jesus, but another one's come back because the strong man is there and is not identified. So the first thing for you to be 100% delivered, and I believe that you, you know, when Jesus comes, breaking deliverance can happen, you, 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 you know, the way that he wants. But also I understand that there are certain things that you need to identify, okay? So with the Holy Spirit, you need to ask, okay, maybe I'm suffering from depression, anxiety, and suicide. Maybe as the Holy Spirit, Holy, Holy Spirit, what caused this? Where is this coming from? And maybe you realize maybe there is a spirit of rejection. Rejection can come as iniquity, so generational. In rejection can come in the womb. So maybe your parents rejected you. Your mom didn't want to have you. Your dad abandoned you when uh, you were in your mother's womb. Uh, also in childhood, if you suffer uh, traumatic experiences, rape, molestation, a lot of physical abuse from your mother, your father, a, a lot of division when you were young, that can open the spirit of rejection that can open the portal to this spirit in teenage years in adulthood so there is a lot of things that the spirit of rejection can come into your life so once you identify that now you realize wow the spirit of i'm dealing with depression anxiety and suicide because of rejection i have a lot of low self-esteem i'm not love my parents didn't love me my parents didn't understand me they criticized me too much then you find out that your mom struggled with the same issue of rejection she was in love she was raped she was traumatized so now that passed to you so what you have to do first of all unforgiveness you need to deal with unforgiveness why Every time that we are doing deliverance on people, first we find out if there is unforgiveness because the spirits and demons attach to unforgiveness. So the first step is, is there any unforgiveness in your heart? That's the first step for deliverance, unforgiveness. When you repent and you forgive that person, you forgive your mom, your dad, you forgive yourself, you even, and then you repent, Father, forgive me for having this unforgiveness in me, forgive me. So now you repent. Now you go to the process of renouncing. So now you come and renounce all of those minions, renounce suicide, depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, panic attacks, I renounce fear, I renounce rejection. And after you have renounced, now the legal right, the contract has been broken. Now in the name of Jesus, I command, the spirit of rejection and every minion that came because of rejection to live right now in Jesus' name. And then you command all of those minions to live in Jesus' name. You close the door and that's it. Never again. So unforgiveness, you need to make sure that there's no unforgiveness. You repent, renounce, command the spirit to live, close the door. But I also believe that in some cases, you are going to need someone to help you. I believe in self-deliverance 100%, but if someone hasn't gone through a process of deliverance, I believe that they are going to need help with the first session, maybe the second, depending on the route. And after that, people can um, work on self-deliverance. Thank you so much, Julie. Now, you also have a ministry. I know you're with Rig Nation ministering right now, but you also have your own ministry. Could you tell us about that? I know it's called Julie Lopez Ministries, but elaborate more on it. Yeah, so um, I actually last year, so it's been actually one year ago, I just started to do one-to-one -one deliverance on people. I did over a hundred deliverances uh, in eight months. It was actually tiring, exhausting. And I was just asking the Holy Spirit, give me a strategy because I like what I'm doing, but I want to reach as many people as possible, not just one one. And then he told me after I got commissioned in September, open a mentorship program to not only help people to be delivered, to be set free, but to train them, to equip them, give them all of these tools and all of this knowledge so they can be set free, but they can go and set free their families, their cities, their nations. So I opened this mentorship program and it's been two months and we have almost 600 people that have joined that are being, we actually last, last night had a, a session of deliverance of the spirit of, re, of rejection. So this is kind of like 
in my ministry, I also have been called as a prophet to the nations. So part of my, also my, my desire, my calling is to equip people in the prophetic. As I said, deliverance and the prophetic for me goes together. So as I'm uh, trying to help these people to be set free of all of these things, as I'm giving them the tools for deliverance, I'm also doing prophetic training with them and helping them to see in the spirit and helping them as they are removing all of the clutter from their eyes and their ears and all of that, I'm training them to prophesy and training them in dreams, in visions, and I also want to put like a council of prophets, hopefully in the future, when the, spirit, uh, the, when the Holy Spirit guides me, open a council of prophets and the vision is to see for nations so all of these prophets we are going to come together and we are actually going to become watchmen for nations see the attacks of the enemy what the enemy is trying to bring into a nation what the enemy is currently doing and start doing prophetic acts and strategies and coming against what the enemy is doing and releasing prophecies for nations all of that stuff so that is also what i'm planning to do equipping and training these people to have like an like an army like an you know uh my husband said like, like an x-men each one of them with different powers try try trying to save trying to come against the enemy that's actually how it is a council of prophets of seers of all of these people seeing for nations releasing prophecies and and um, freedom for the nation so that is julie lopez ministries um yeah beautiful all right so would you do me a big favor and pray for everyone watching right now if they need deliverance um if they need prayer of any kind could you just please end this out in prayer yes of course so Father, in Jesus' name, Father, I just give you thanks for everything that you are doing. Father, thank you because you are exposing darkness. Thank you, Father, because you are opening the eyes of your people. And Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I just declare, Father, that everything that is covered, Father, the spiritual eyes, everything that is blinding, Father, the eyes of their understanding. I just, Father, remove that in Jesus' name. And I just declare, Father, that your light, Jesus, is going to penetrate the eyes of the understanding understanding and they're going to be able father to see with clarity and what discernment what you wanted to see father in jesus name i release the spirit of discernment and wisdom and revelation father that your people are going to be people that understand what they are facing father i just come against every spirit of suicide depression and death i mute you blind you and confuse you and i declare that you don't have any legal right in these people i declare that you are not going to manifest you are not going to speak and I just detach each one of them from these spirits right now in Jesus name and thank you father because it's no me it's you through me thank you father for the authority that you have given me through Jesus Christ through Jesus Christ thank you father for bringing healing and deliverance in your people thank you father because you are opening their eyes and thank you father because you are bringing people that are going to help them father to be set free of each one of these iniquities of each one of these tormenting spirits that are trying to bind your people father i release freedom right now and i just come against every tormenting spirit even father even a spirit that is trying to come in the middle of the night to torment them father i just command them to live right now in jesus name and i just declare freedom tonight in each one of them thank you father to you all the glory in jesus name amen, amen. thank you so much julie Thank you so much for having me here. It was a pleasure to be here.